Debbie Dinesh. It is so wonderful to be able to share this joyous time with both of you. I want to share with you a few words from the Holy Bible about what God says about matrimony. First of all, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And then in Genesis chapter 2, it says in verse 18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And then beginning on verse 21, the word of God says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and uh, he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and in the original language he, he says, it, he took from his side and closed the flesh in his place. From his side so that you two could be equal partners. Not from your head, so you could lord over her. Not from your feet, so you could trample over her, but from your side. They could be comparable one to another. And you know, the Bible says that you are complete in her, and she is complete in you. Because you see, in this union, Two facets of the character of life are manifested. The niche in you, the warrior character of God is manifested. But in Debbie, the tender side of God is manifested. And you complete one another. You see, that's why the Bible says he could find no one comparable to him. You need the other half of the character of God, so you can be complete in one another. And uh, then I want to go on to Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with verse 18, and it says, And do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. And it is the Spirit of God that makes you one, because He's the one that directs you and empowers you and guides you into all truth. Verse 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And I know, Debbie, you can do a wonderful, wonderful job of that because you have such a gift of singing. Dinesh, I don't know how well you can do that, but you can make melody in your heart anyway. But uh, it is, you know, it just full of joy, and your life should be full of joy. And verse 20 said, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Always being thankful. You know, there are challenges in life. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, it says, be always joyful. Psalm 1611 says, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. There is a phrase that you hear in Christian circles. Practice the presence of God. Take time alone to seek his presence because in his presence there is fullness of joy. And that joy becomes contagious one to another. So begin your day together seeking him. And let his joy fill your lives and just let that joy engulf both of you. Verse 17 of 1 Thessalonians 5 says, pray without ceasing. And you say, well, how can I pray without ceasing? I got work to do. I got a film to make. I got things to do. But I'll tell you what, pray without ceasing simply means leave the lines of communication open. God is always talking. The problem is, a lot of times, we're not listening. So keep an attentive ear and be open to what God is saying to you and how he directs you in your everyday life. And then in verse 18, it says, in everything, give thanks. Not for everything. I mean, there are things that obviously are not good. But in the midst of even the things that are not good, 
you can give him thanks because he is greater than those circumstances. So in all circumstances, you can always give thanks to him because he is in control. And it's con that verse continues, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. So practice a life of thanksgiving. Because when you practice a life of, life of thanksgiving, he gives you that peace that surpasses all understanding. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let all your requests be made known unto God. And then he promises, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So as we continue looking at uh, Ephesians chapter 5, I think the key verse in that whole chapter is verse 21, which says, submitting to one another in the fear of God. There's a wonderful passage in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 12, which says that a cord of three strands is not easily broken. And those two strands, the niche is you, Debbie is you, and the third strand is Jesus. And those three strands form a cord that is not easily broken. So when we look at Ephesians 5.21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, that means, Debbie, that you submit to Jesus in the niche. And the niche, you submit to Jesus in Debbie. And that cord of three strands cannot be broken. So the marriage is not between two of you, it's between three of you. Dinesh, Debbie, and Jesus in a, just a cord of three strands that is not easily broken. We continue in chapter 5 of Ephesians, verse 25. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. And, well, that's verse 28. First of all, in verse 25, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. We heard in the first reading that was made today about that sacrificial love, that agape love, that love with which Jesus loves us. Denish, that is how you ought to love Debbie. It is a sacrificial love. It's a love that doesn't expect anything in return. You love her because she is worthy of your love. You love her because the warrior side of you is reaching to the tender side of her. And so you pour your love to her in the same manner as Jesus poured his love and went to a cross at Calvary because he loved the church. You see, we've gotten it backwards and we say, well, Jesus' relationship to the church is representative of the relationship of a man and a woman. That's backwards. The relationship between a man and a woman is representative of Jesus' relation to the church. That sacrificial love that gave everything. That's how you are to love her. And then in verse 33, it says, Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. Now this is very interesting, Dinesh. God commands you to love Debbie. But Debbie, God's command to you is different. God's command to you is that you respect Dinesh. Now let me say this, Dinesh. You may respect Debbie all you want. But if you don't show love to her, if you don't pour that unconditional love to her, that respect is worthless. And Debbie, you may love her all, love him all you want. You may pour and just shower him with love. But if you do not respect him, it's of little worth. Your need, understand this, Denish, Debbie's need is for love. And Debbie, you need to understand 
that the greatest need that Dinesh has from you is respect. Remember many years ago, there was a book called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. <laughs> They're totally different, and they have two entirely different needs. I don't think there's anything more important in your relationship than for you to understand this. What you need to do towards Debbie is love. And Debbie, what you need to pour upon Dinesh is respect. You know, there, I want to finish with another passage of scripture in 1 Peter chapter 3. Because again, it shows the difference between the two. Debbie, to you the Lord says... In 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging of hair, wearing gold, and putting on fire. And you are a beautiful woman. But verse 4 says, rather let it be the hidden person of the heart. With the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. A gentle and quiet spirit. That's how you minister to the niche, a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. And the niche, the Lord says to you, husbands, likewise, dwell with them, with Debbie, with understanding. Now, that takes a lifetime, you know. <laughs> understanding a woman is the, the most unsearchable thing you can do. But that's what you need to do. Try to understand her. Giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. You see, if you don't pour your love upon her, if you don't treat her with understanding, God says your prayers bounce off the ceiling. It hinders your prayers to God. And then to both of us, both of you, he says, finally, be of one mind, having compassion for one another, love as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you, are, you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. You know, there are going to be challenges. If ever anyone tells you life is going to be peachy forever, they're lying to you. There will be challenges. But you know, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, it says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You are to uphold one another when there are challenges. This is the niche where that understanding comes in. This is where that respect comes in. Debbie, this is where that love comes in. And I want to finish with one verse that ties to what Pastor said earlier about the covenant of marriage that you're entering in. It's a passage of scripture in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24, that says, To a multitude of friends you must show yourself friendly, but there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. It is very interesting if you go to the original Hebrew, the word for friend in the front part of that verse is not the same as the word for friend in the second part of the verse. In the, word, in the first part, when it says, it says, to a multitude of friends you must show yourself friendly, the word is rare. It means an acquaintance. But in the latter part where it says there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, the word is not rare, but ahab, and ahab means covenant partner. And a covenant partner relationship is the deepest relationship you can enter to, even more than between a brother and sister. And that's the relationship that God has called you into, into a covenant relationship with one another, just like each of the two of you are in a covenant relationship with Almighty God through Jesus Christ. And that takes us back to that cord of three strands that is not easily broken. Honor that eternal covenant of love that you've made with one another. I speak blessings over you in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the, may the Lord lift his countenance for you and give you peace. 
May the Lord bless you when you walk in, when you go out. May the Lord bless you in everything you do. May the Lord bless your marriage forevermore in the name of Jesus. Amen.